This is Winston-Salem, North Carolina, part of the Piedmont Triad region, now a major metropolitan area. Hey, my name is Wanda Urbanska. Do you have a Sorry, minute? No. Sir, do you have a minute? We're doing some interviews for two minutes. I'm for... about town for one. Well, that's good. Where are you from? Uh, North Carolina. We're talking about time. Do you have extra time in your life, or are you time short? Um, my time is short. So you're an MBA student, mm -hmm. and you're also working. Mm -hmm. How many hours a week does that um, take up? I say it's about 80 or 90. 80 or 90 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough time in your life? Oh, no, never. <laughs> no, that's probably the most valuable thing that I don't have. Why do you feel like you don't have enough time? Uh, I just feel like I'm racing through the day all the time. Probably kids, you try and cram too much into the day. In Greensboro, North Carolina, Justin Catanoso, who is married with three young daughters, describes the kind of start to a day most folks now take for granted. I'm getting up, I'm making sandwiches for the girls, I'm making their lunches. If that's not done by 7 o'clock, then the first one can't get on the bus. If I haven't read the paper and gotten that out of the way by 7.15, you know, that's not going to happen. If I am not able to exercise by 7.25, exercise isn't going to get in. Author Richard Swenson, a physician in Menominee, Wisconsin, has diagnosed our condition in a series of timely books. The books Margin and A Minute of Margin are incisive x-rays of time-starved lives. And Dr. Swenson's book, the overload syndrome lends an apt name to America's number one lifestyle disease. For Dr. Swenson and his wife, Linda, most Americans are like patients in a clinic, desperately in need of restoring balance to our lives. When the patient comes in and you have to find where the lack of balance is, you either have too little or you have too much. And then you have expensive therapeutics and treatments and surgery to kind of get balance back. In the same way the body needs balance and is very expert at keeping balance, humans in a cultural and societal context need balance too. And right now, almost every force in the culture, more and more of everything, faster and faster, is inherently unbalancing. For psychiatrist Peter Weibrow, director of the Semmel Institute of Neuroscience and Human Behavior at UCLA, this out-of-balance overload of activities is leading to an American mania, also the title of his latest book. And when you get out to that degree of activity, you actually begin to stress your body to a point where it begins to break down. So you see an extraordinary increase in greed, which is a behavioral disorder in my book. You see a terrible increase in obesity, for example, rising anxiety, depression, there are, uh, the statistics suggest that in the last 20 years in America, many of these factors have doubled. Anxiety has gone from about 18% in epidemiological studies <clears throat> to 30 or t 32 or 35% of people who complain of anxiety. So we're pushing the limits of human physiology, and that's what I mean by mania. Juliet Shore teaches sociology at Boston College and for many years has been tracking the American workplace and what has been happening to American workers. What's happened is that we've had more than 30 years now of rising hours of work in this country, beginning in the late 1960s and still continuing every year. Average hours of work have increased. We've now increased in the last 30 years by about 200 hours a year, uh, equivalent to five additional weeks of work for the average American employee. And where's that time coming from? It's coming from the amount of time we sleep. It's coming from the, our housework. It's coming from leisure time. For women, it's coming from a, a, you know, a funny category in time use data, which is called time for self. 